One of the steps before launching any kind of rocket is figuring out exactly how far your rocket is going to fly. And of course, if you want to be really accurate about that, you should probably do some propulsion testing before you actually go and do the launch. With some testing underneath your belt, you'll be able to better understand the performance of your rocket and ultimately have a better idea of the trajectory and maybe, if you're into that kind of thing, if you're going to be able to break a record or not. So if you remember back a couple of months ago, Astra was talking a little bit about how we had a little fun project going on to build a water rocket that might be able to break a world record. And we're still working on it, sporadically, when we get a little bit of time. So what is this world record we're trying to break? The water rocket record that we're trying to break is fairly simple. You just have to be able to build a water rocket with a standard 2 liter pop bottle, or less, and use a pressure less than 6.9 bar. And whoever can launch that rocket to the highest point and recover it will get that record. Right now the record stands at 127 meters, so that's the one that we're trying to break. If you want to know more about water rocket world records, be sure to check out our video on the topic here. Because it's all part of the plan. Probably the most important part of any propulsion test stand is actually being able to measure how much force the rocket is producing. In order to do this, we bought these cheap piezo-resistive pressure sensors, which you can just buy off Amazon or something. And we connected that up with a Raspberry Pi, which so happens to be the same one that we're using for Transcendence, in order to actually calculate the pressure that's being put onto that sensor. If we design the test stand properly, we can basically have the water rocket pushing up against that sensor, and that can basically tell us what the force will be. But it's not quite that simple, because the value that you read off of that sensor is basically just a voltage between 0 and 5 volts. And unfortunately, thrust is not measured in volts. So we have to have some way to convert between the voltage measure that the sensor is giving us and the actual force that's being delivered in real life. And to do this, we have to do calibration. I'm just going to start off with 1% thrust capacity. So here we have our setup. It's basically just this 3D printed part, which is going to be what pushes onto the pressure sensor. That's going to basically do the job of trying to figure out what the forces are acting on the water rocket and right now it's just in its starting phase here but you can see that it's all connected up with the Arduino. We've put in some code there and basically it's going to be uh, calculating changes in voltage and we can then convert those into what the forces are that are acting on the piece. But before we can do that we have to do a little bit of calibration because we don't really know exactly what voltages will equal what forces. So the plan here is to use some water. We have here my tea kettle. <laughs> and I'm just going to basically use my scale here. And I'm going to fill a bucket of water a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And we should get a decent calibration just by doing that. And of course, we can convert the mass to force by just taking the mass that we get on the scale and multiplying by gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then that will give you the force. After doing a full calibration from zero to around 80 newtons of force, we were able to get this approximation curve estimate for any value that we get in voltage and convert it into a force. So with the electronics part out of the way, it's time to actually go about building that stand. We're going to have strong, incredible aluminum. The strategy here is just to create a system which can contain that bottle rocket while also providing a surface on which we can put that pressure sensor that will give us the thrust reading in the end. We tried to keep this pretty simple with just building some wood and some steel rods with nuts and washers and stuff to contain the bottle rocket. And we 3D printed a special plate which we put on top of the bottle which will be able to push against that force sensor and give us a good reading. The way this will be working is basically we have our structure here which are these wooden uh, pillars and those are going to be basically the foundation for the stand and then we have this big hole in the middle right here and that's basically where the bottle is going to sit and then we have these two little holes here and we're going to pass these uh, the string through those holes and that's how we're going to actually pull the sleeve of the bottle down and that's basically what releases the bottle rocket and then we have here four holes 
and that's basically where the steel rods are going to go. Their job is to contain the bottle rocket so that it doesn't go flying off in some weird direction. So uh, yeah, you'll see in just a second here once I assemble it all, what exactly that's going to look like. All right, so now you can see the entire construction and its completeness. So basically, the way this will work in total is, of course, the bottle will sit right in here. Those two strings will go through these two holes here. That's the strings that are going to release that sleeve. Those strings will go below this uh, aluminum beam right here. And basically that way I can pull it sideways and it'll make a downwards force and pull on the sleeve there. In addition to that, the way this frame will sit, like th these pieces right here are gonna be tied to basically a concrete block. I have some concrete blocks outside, so that's the way we're gonna keep this on the ground. Hopefully it's enough weight to hold down the water rocket. And then finally, of course, we have those steel beams that go all the way up to the top. We're gonna have our uh, force sensor basically placed on the top here. It'll sit right on the bottom underneath here. And so when the water rocket pushes up, it'll push against this piece. And of course, this whole uh, contraption will be held in tension. And hopefully, it'll stay together while that's happening. <laughs> But we'll see about that, I guess. And yeah, if you want to put the bottle in or out, of course, you just have to unscrew from the top and put it in. So it shouldn't be too challenging in that respect. So the other nice thing about this design is that we can actually adjust the height of this platform so we don't have to have it exactly correct. So I can actually just screw these guys down. And this whole platform will basically lower and we can make it so it's just the right height for the bottle. So theoretically, you could accommodate all kinds of different sizes of bottles in order to use this stand. So, really kind of a good way to deal with that problem. Alright, let's see what this thing can do. With the stand fully built, it was time to do a little bit of testing just to make sure that everything's working properly. Here the procedure is pretty simple. You just have to pour water into the water rocket up to around 40% full. Then you flip the bottle around, push it down the steel rods, and then get it locked in the quick release sleeve at the bottom of the tower. The next step is very important, which is to put the wooden brace on top of those steel rods and lock them with the locking nuts. This will basically contain the water rocket so it doesn't go anywhere, and also be the plate on which the force sensor is going to be measuring forces. We started very cautiously with just 2.5 bar in the first test. Three, two, one, go! All systems nominal. Looks like everything's working pretty well. Time to step up to some of the more important tests. We put all the electronics onto the stand with the pressure sensor and the data recording device. We also want to pressurize this up to some higher pressures. The goal is to get all the way to 6.9 bar because that's the pressure that we're allowed to launch the rocket at. But in an abundance of caution, we decided just to go up to five bar just to make sure that, you know, if there's anything weird that's gonna happen, it'll happen at a slightly lower pressure. Here we have mission control. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's working. Okay, uh, I have to start my camera and then we can start. With that final pretest out of the way, we are finally ready to go up to the full pressure, 6.9 bar. One more, one more pump, one more pump. Okay, right there. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> So it turns out we actually forgot the most important safety feature of this whole stand, which is that you have to put the nuts onto the plate that's holding down the water rocket in the end. If you don't do that, that plate basically just flies right off the steel rods and will end up going flying. And uh, in this case, it flew quite far. <laughs> it basically ended up in my neighbor's yard, so... Hopefully they're cool about that. This is one reason why you should probably do this kind of stuff in an open space, because even when 
you think of everything, you're gonna make mistakes, and when you do, you probably wanna have some buffer, uh, otherwise you could potentially cause some damage. But we're not deterred by our failure. There's no failure, only opportunities. It turns out most of our electronics actually survived. Despite the power of the explosion, uh, you know, it was pretty much okay in the end. We decided to forge on and continue to test with our setup. We just had to basically fill it back up and put it all back together again. So, uh, test number three. We're going up to six bar. <laughs> You said seven, right? We're gonna to go to six point nine, but first, just get to six. We have to make sure the bottle is still okay. Yep. Six bar. Yep. Okay. Now be slow when you go next, because we don't want it to go beyond six point nine, because we're pushing to the edge of the performance of PET bottles. And honestly, this bottle has been through some stuff. So. <laughs> And there you have it, our final test at 6.9 bar. And the thrust curve that we got out of this was actually very useful. It turns out that we're generating quite a lot of force, actually even more than I was expecting. When we put this thrust curve into the sheet that calculates our trajectory, it turns out that we might be able to get up to an altitude of up to 200 meters, which would be pretty awesome and would definitely break a water rocketry record. At this point, we're pretty much ready to launch this thing. So stay tuned because we're going for that record.